And in him, you too are being built together to become what? A dwelling in which God lives by his spirit. We're going to talk about that today. I think we're going to talk about it in kind of a creative way. But first of all, just to kind of highlight where we are in this series on exploring the congregation away. Remember last Sunday, we talked about how we come to know who the church is. And we realize it's actually how you spell church, C-H. You are C-H. We are the church. And then we, we looked at that dynamic through three of the classical hallmarks we would call in the congregational way. For we are a Christ-centered community of faith. We are a truth-seeking community of faith to honor and love God with heart, mind, and soul that the faith community is a safe place to explore the claims of the faith. It's a safe place to ask questions so that we can have depth to our faith. But we are also uniquely a covenant connected community of believers. We, we have made a promise to be church to allow what Paul said to Ephesians to happen among us. And next Sunday, we're going to be looking more into depth as to who we are as a local church in the congregational way. And there's a number of historical documents that's uniquely connected to this community of believers. We published shortly after this church was organized a booklet titled Who We Are as a Church in the Congregational Way, a remarkable piece, and that will be republished and distributed next week. We also had establish core values and we also articulated the role of core values in the life of the church we're going to be looking at that again next week as we again look at the framework of the historical pieces of thinking that has created this church to be what it is but this morning it's going to be kind of a different type of a message more like a um, testimony where I want you to get to know who I am as a Christian who made a decision to be a part of a congregational community of believers. And the reason I think it would be good to do that in the context of the series is there's a number of you who don't know my story. So I want you to get to know me a little better, and I want to get to know you a little better as well. So I welcome any invitation for us to get together and, and have a cup of coffee or have a meal or, or just get together and, and talk about what God has been doing in your life. I want us to get to know each other. But uh, my Christian adventure, it all began in Sunday school. It was Sunday school. I was taken to a Presbyterian church, and I didn't go on my own. I remember fighting it because I wanted to sleep in on Sunday morning. I wanted to get up and watch cartoons. But... Uh, my parents, they opted for me as part of their parenting responsibilities and opportunity and joy. They opted for me to have my values to be influenced by the sacred as well as my values as a kid would be influenced by the secular. Sure, I'd learned some things on the playground. I'd learned some things on the athletic team, but... I also needed to know about the values of the faith. So they had me baptized. 
They dragged me to church. They said, you've got to go through confirmation. And then once you've, you're confirmed, you're on your own. You get to fly solo then. And so I did. Now, my parents were not overly religious, okay? They weren't. They were just common, everyday folk who we would pray before meals. Church was important, but it wasn't the topic of our conversations all the time. They just realized this was an important thing for us to do as a household. And then after my confirmation, I did what many confirms do. I stopped going to church. And I think the reason I stopped going to church is I reflect upon it. The church didn't have much more for me after that. They had Sunday school. They had confirmation. And at that age, I'm sorry, Sunday morning worship just didn't do it for me. I had faith in God as a kid. But things just ended there as a local church. And it wasn't until a number of years later that I happened to reconnect with my faith. And I was a part of a garage band. And one of the guitar players in the band was a Methodist. And he started getting involved in his church. And they called me Lonzo. He said, Lonzo, why don't you come join me at church on Wednesday night? Not Sunday morning, Wednesday night. And we have our youth group that gets together. And... Um, I reconnected with my faith. I said, well, sure, what else can I do in the middle of the week? Sounds like a fun thing to do. And, and they had a wonderful youth gathering. And as, as I reflect upon that invitation at that point, it, it, it wasn't about athletics that I was needing. At that point, as a youngster who was confirmed, I was looking for social activities that would allow me to connect with others from a Christian perspective. For there was community where people, as a youth, really cared for me. And those kinds of relationships and the benefit of fellowship, I treasured them. I had a family of peers and, and adults, obviously, that nurtured relationships that was of a spiritual dynamic. And I needed a community that cared. And it wasn't happening on Sunday morning in my church. It just wasn't. Well, after participating in these Wednesday nights, and by the way, we went on Wednesday nights, but we had so much fun being together on Wednesday night, we would tolerate Sunday morning worship. Not because we liked what the preacher had to say. We just liked being with each other again and hanging out. And, and then what we would do on Wednesday night, we would talk about how we agreed or disagreed with the preacher. And it just created a beautiful thing that, that God did. Well, after doing that for several months, a uh, traumatic question came to me. And this is one of the things I'm wanting to do in this message this morning is uplift three highlights, three highlights from growing healthy in a Christian faith. And the first one is coming up. One of my classmates at a Wednesday night youth gathering said, Lonnie, have you ever thought about becoming a pastor? I see how you talk to people and how you care. I think you'd be a really good pastor. And I thought, you're nuts. <laughs> that was never, that was never a, an item to consider. And it, but it was interesting. Once this kid, not, not a, 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 a minister, put that thought in my head, I couldn't shake it. 
It just seemed like maybe I had to look at that. And so here is a journey insight at that point. And the insight is pay attention to surprise insights from persons who know you and who want the best from you. My experience has been one of the ways oftentimes that we hear what we say God speaking to us obviously can be through the pages of Scripture and his word. But I think there is a dynamic that God may use individuals. So watch what you say to people. Because you could be starting something. So that's why I say pay attention to people who know you and want the best for you, okay? You don't want them to have any kind of hidden agenda. But pay attention to that. So uh, I made a decision. As a high schooler, that this is what I had to do. Now, an interesting story. Uh, my grandmother, when she heard... I was planning to go into pastoral ministry. This was her response. Why does he want to do that? There's no money in it. And, you know, I don't blame her. My, my grandparents, they were entrepreneurs. They had car lots and neighborhood grocery stores. And their whole thing was, we, we want you to have, we want you to be successful in the marketplace. And minister, now, my grandmother, this is on my father's side, was Roman Catholic. So maybe her idea of minister was a priest. Said, well, would he get married? Would he have kids? I won't have any great-grandkids. And her husband, my grandfather, was Nazarene. Very extreme. So Sunday morning, she would go off to Mass. He would go off to the Nazarene church. I would go with my grandmother every now and then to Mass and go on Christmas Eve. I'd learn how to play poker with the Catholics. <laughs> it was great. And I learned how to praise God and worship God with the Nazarenes. So uh, that was her, her response. But actually, in the genealogy of her household, Having clergy in the family line really wasn't new. My grandfather, the Nazarene, his father was a Nazarene circuit riding evangelist. Here's his picture, J.D. Richardson. I just love that picture. All poised with his Bible and his finger. You just see him out there preaching a revival in rural Missouri. Oh, my goodness, J.D. Richardson. And my maternal Grandmother, her maiden name was Graham. And she loved to say, we're related to Billy Graham. I don't know how true that actually is. That might be more of, of a legend. But that grandmother, she was Pentecostal. Whole mixture of influences in our lives. Well, when the news came out, more that this was the direction I was going, my father, my grandmother was upset because there was no money in it. My father totally disapproved of the direction. He said, no way, because I wanted to go to a private Christian college for the first installment of my theological training before I went to seminary. He said, son, I'm just not going to pay the tuition for that. I want you to go to a state school, which was cheaper, but you're on your own. Well, that, that's, that's how it lied. Now, what's really interesting, I had this sense, this is what God wanted, and I wasn't sure how I would be able to do what I felt God wanted me to do. Where would the money come? Where would the funding come? And then all of a sudden, you probably didn't know this, your pastor was a hamburger star. I'm a senior in high school, and an opportunity, this is from the, high, from the high school newsletter on Lonnie Becomes Hamburger Star. I, it, an intriguing opportunity came up where uh, Burger Chef, who was one of the early franchise hamburger chains, Hardy later bought them out. Their headquarters was in Indianapolis. They brought a, a, a film crew in from New York to do a series of national commercials 
and I was asked to come on a Thursday night and, and said, Lonnie, you, we want you to come. All you have to do is eat hamburgers. When you're a high schooler and you can eat all the hamburgers you want, yes, I'm in. So I go and the whole, it, was, it was amazing. Like you're talking about a national, a, a, a big filming crew who transformed one of their, their restaurants. And, and I, 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 I ate hamburgers and I had to look amazed when cowboys entered Burger Chef. That night, um, I had to sign a contract with McCann Erickson, who was a talent agency in New York. That night, I had to join the Screen Actors Guild. I'm a high schooler. I'm not an actor. I, I've never acted in a play. It's not me. And because it was a Nash commercial that ran over a year, if you look on the right side, you probably can't see the earning statements but the first three quarters of the first year more than paid for my first year of college. <laughs> paid for it. Paid for it. <sighs> it was amazing. It was amazing. And uh, I never will forget uh, later on my father. He just, he was flabbergasted. And he had, I remember that he had tears in his eyes. And he said, you were right, son. God will provide. Wow. God will provide. I think dad was glad he took me to Sunday school then. He wondered about that choice later. So that um, kind of takes me to a, a second insight for growing healthy in the Christian faith that, that I gleaned from the journey in the faith. And that insight is we can trust God to provide what is necessary when we choose to follow him. It was amazing. So then I, I, I graduated from college with a philosophy and a religion degree minor in communications, and I, right out of college, I was hired uh, to go to the, the Methodist Cathedral in St. Louis and start a youth ministry, a thing for kids. And it was a remarkable, remarkable time, remarkable place, and the thing was, Lonnie, we need you a year full time, and then you can go to graduate school, but, you know, give us a year. And um, I met Mercedes there. We were married there. I ended up earning, the, you know, the, the Master of Divinity, the Doctor of Ministry. And uh, things were good. God was good. The church was good. The church cared for me. And I cared for the church. I did. But I noticed over the years that something was changing inside me. Not so much with theology. My theology was intact, but, but I guess I would call it polity and organization and structure. For in, in that system, you know, a pastor was assigned to a church one year at a time. Only a year. You might be there longer, and the average tenure of a pastor then was three to five years. And, after, you know, you're just learning to know where the light switches are before you got to move. And you have an annual appointment. As a pastor, I could never be a member of the church. I was a member of a conference of clergy, which was kind of like a union. And it was clergy-dominated. And... And that's fine. God blesses that. God uses it. And there, it's a wonderful system. And it's from, you know, John Wesley's statement. He said, the world is my parish, so we don't send clergy just to, just to serve one little area. It's the big church. I get that. I, I see that. It's one of God's ways of providing a way of, of being church to a diverse people. But... 
I was uncomfortable because I couldn't concrete the swing set in for my three kids because we were always having to move. I never left to another church because I wanted to or because the people said, get this guy out of here. We need another minister. It was, it was always to serve the broader church, which, which is, is lovely, and it, and it has its place. But um, I was uncomfortable with that. And I was crazy, if you think about it. I, 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 the church was great. I loved where I was. I had great relationships. But to be committed to a fellowship of believers till God moved otherwise was important to me. And um, so I, I uh, heard about the congregational way, that it was a church, that there's no outside organization that dictates how it will run its affairs. It's done congregationally, and that was attractive to me. I talked to a, a colleague who was very, very successful and effective in ministry, and, and he became the pastor of a congregational church, Mayflower Congregational Church in Grand Rapids, Michigan. I called him up. I said, Ken, tell me about this congregational thing. And he knew what I was going through, and, and he ushered me, and, and I learned of a church that was look, in a national search. And um, in 1995, after 18 years in an appointive system, I said goodbye to it all and cut my teeth in the congregational way, and I moved to Wisconsin. And here we are. The third insight that I have from all that is this. If you're not developing and growing, you're not alive. You're not. Now, here's the challenge when you feel God pulling you and moving you in a significant new direction, and that is to differentiate between healthy growth or compromising with core values. Sometimes we can compromise a core value and we call it, I'm growing, where in fact you're not. You're compromising with where the faith should not be compromised. And that's a death sentence for a local church. Well, it is important to underscore that there's nothing inherently wrong with an appointed system of, of polity. It, it has its place. It works. God blesses it. But it just was no longer for me. And sometimes I think we, we do that throughout our faith journeys. We realize, well, this was good for a time. Now I, I'm different. I'm hopefully growing healthy in the faith, and it's leading me in, in, in a different direction that I never imagined. And so for me, it was important to build an enduring congregational local church relationships that I long for. It's good that we have options in the church. In fact, if you look at the churches of the New Testament, we looked a bit at in Ephesus this morning, they were different. Not different in who Jesus was to them, but they were different in how they did church. And the challenges and the opportunities that existed in each setting. So let's bring the beginning back to the end. In him, you, you too are being built together to become the dwelling in which God lives by his spirit. It's all about following where Jesus leads you. Follow him.